Hey, what is up YouTube? This is Summer Man Master coming at you guys from the Teen Time Riders YouTube channel. And I'm coming again to you with a video on my Venominaga Turbo deck profile. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be doing a couple of the combos and test hands so you guys can have a look at some of those. So, wanted to start things out right now by discussing some of your key combo pieces. And I wanted to start out with a very particular set of them. Um, I call these your kind of play starters in a way. And I think that's your, uh, these are your basically your four main play starters in this deck. Uh, these two can kind of like match together because they do the same thing. But we have uh, a couple of main cards here. First and foremost, uh, these guys right here, your Ogduatic Boundlesses are great because in Graveyard, you can add them back to your hand by ditching a Reptile from your hand to your Graveyard. So removes the problem of drawing into your Venomenon again. Remnant grabs your Venomenon directly to Grave and can in the same turn Special Summon itself back. And your Coatl can Special Summon itself to the field anytime that you have a Reptile and is treated as a Tuner and Non-Tuner. Uh, wherever the situation may require. So now that you have these four in mind, we're going to get into a couple of test hands. And so you can see how these four are kind of the main ways that you start your combos out um, in the deck. And, uh, you know, there's proactive and reactive cards and different things like that that you can, that you can throw in here for extra added benefit. But this is just going to give you an idea of play strings that you can go on. Now, if you guys have seen my link base extra deck, you probably understand that uh, there's a reason I don't run Pot of Extravagance because um, I think that link climbing and link toolboxing are a lot more effective uh, than just having no access to your extra deck at all. Um, so, you know, you can run things like Helco Fibrax, which you don't want to run more than one of. Uh, I've got Gustav Max in here for game ending plays. You know, there's lots of different cards that, that have sort of special abilities you might not, uh, you know, feel like uh, seeing before. So this is actually a perfect demonstration right here because what I have right here, you may think like, oh my God, this is like the worst hand ever. And yeah, it's a pretty bad hand, but we have a water lily and we have a gardener. So that instantly kind of opens up the plays that we can make, even though we've drawn into Venomenon and Venomenaga, which would normally be a death sentence, uh, our water lily slash gardener play can provide us with a variety of different kind of ways to get out of this. Uh, my old deck that I had, well, fantastic, usually was waiting on like a snake rain or something like that in order to grab a bricked Phenomenaga or Phenomenon in your hand and either put it back in deck or uh, send it to the graveyard. So we're gonna start this move out by doing an Octoatic Water Lily play. And we can start this out actually by doing the one as follows. Do Reptilian Gardena. And then we can activate Octoatic Water Lily, and that's going to allow us to send our, wherever he's at. Night Sword Serpent from our deck to our graveyard. Night Sword Serpent's effect will activate when it's sent to the graveyard and special summon itself to the field. Now we can overlay on top of these guys, and we can grab ourselves a Bahamut Shark. Bahamut Shark can detach, allowing us to grab Totally Awesome to the field. So that's a pretty nice first turn play that you can do. However, we have more options uh, when we have our two level four reptile monsters on board. And you can have even more options if you, for instance, grab something else from your graveyard as well. So. Instead of doing that, how about this? We're going to overlay our monsters into Gallant Granite. And we're gonna detach one material from our Gallant Granite in order to search our deck for this guy right here, our Lord of the Heavenly Prison. Now this is really important because it helps us to kind of get some key plays that we have going here. And I'll show you how Lord of the Heavenly Prison can help us out. We now have one set card we can set on the field and reveal Lord of the Heavenly Prison from our hand. 
So now that our water lily is engraved and this is set here, our hand is these three. Not really that good. However, by revealing your Lord of the Heavenly Prison, you've pretty much protected your back row. So even though you've got a gallon granite on board, um, you know, you're not really, uh, you're not really too worried because, um, you know, unless your opponent kind of OTKs you outright, which yeah, definitely is possible uh, in a deck like this. Um, what we'd like to do is to ideally, you know, we can trigger, for instance, you know, it, like assuming that you have like uh, this guy in Grave, you know, if you have a Reptilian Gardener in Graveyard, that can allow you to trigger for an extra search. But, you know, I guess the key thing is to try and protect yourself as much as possible. And ideally, because you've revealed and you tr can trigger a trap card during your opponent's turn, you have the capability, uh, whether you revive back this or this or whatever, to special summon another chump block blocker to your board. And you don't really care kind of what happens to this guy once he's on the board. He's a great chump blocker, though. Uh, nice 3,000 attack. But the most important thing we're doing is we're grabbing snake rain from the deck and we're setting it on our field. So this basically allows us to kind of get whatever we need, like a piece to unbrick our hand from our deck to the field. And um, Snake Rain is so important in this deck because of like several different reasons. And so you already have like three monsters on the board and that's assuming, for instance, that your, whether or not you get a search off of your Gardena if it's destroyed by battle or card effect to grab you for instance, a Reptilian Coatl. We're just going to pretend that you don't get the search because it's like, well, um, you never you never know what's going to happen uh, with your next plays. But you would grab, for instance, a Coatl and be able to go into a Synchro play next turn. But it's very, very important for those kinds of purposes. So assuming we draw next turn, okay, we have um, an Allure of Darkness. The most important thing we've grabbed here is Snake Rain. So we can take our uh, Bricked Reptile in hand uh, and for instance, we can discard it to the graveyard. But what I'm first going to do is I'm going to grab a Lure of Darkness um, because we run two of these, so you can feel free to banish one of them from the game uh, if you think that we can get more kind of benefits from that. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, whether or not you guys want to keep the trap trick is entirely up to you. And also, whether or not you feel going for the Venomonaga play at this point is actually the best move. Now, granted, in my old deck, Venomonaga was your win con, but in this deck, Venomonaga is not necessarily um, <clears throat> the be-all, end-all play. <clears throat> it's a play that you should always try and seek to go into, but it might not necessarily be the best play of a given moment. So you have to take stock of where you are in the duel and uh, you know determine whether or not you would like to send your Reptilian Coatl and try and go for Venomonaga, or you'd like to send your Venomonaga and try and go for a Coatl play. So in this particular hand right here, I think I'd make the personal judgment call that, uh, you know, given the fact that I only have very few pieces for Venomonaga, I might want to test my chances at a Reptilian Coatl play. So I discard the Venomonaga off of this. And the most important thing is we send this guy, this guy, as I said, guys, your play starter slash extenders and a Leert and a uh, Zoha. So now we have a nice filled up graveyard full of guys and uh, we have these guys here. Now the most important kind of part of this is that when you control no monsters, what you can do is you can grab your Ogduatic Remnant and special summon him to the field. And um, then what we have here is you can special summon your Reptilian Coatl. So why is this important? Well, for the following reason. Because now we can synchro or link these away or even XYZ them, uh, as long as we go into a reptile monster. But what we're gonna do right now is we're going to link them away. And we're going to grab a reptilian echidna. Just pop that up there. Reptilian echidna's effect will allow us to search a reptilian from our deck to our hand. So, for instance, we will grab our Lamian. Then, we can activate one of our effects from Graveyard, which is our Alert, the Ogduatic Boundless. Now, why is this so important? 
because now that we have two reptiles banished, we can tribute this and activate a Leert's effect in the main monster zone to take our two banished cards, place them back in the grave. And now uh, we can special summon by reducing the attack power of one of our opponent's monsters to zero, our Reptilian Lamia. And then we can now synchro summon into a level 10 monster. So lots of different plays you can make in this deck. Uh, if you want to replace your ravenous croconoid or croco dragon uh, with a uh, with a baron de fleur, I don't think anyone's going to blame you. But uh, that's kind of the first uh, play string that you have in a deck like this. So you see the power that we were able to kind of get out of a pretty terrible hand where we drew both Phenomenon and Phenomenaga. The most important part of this deck is its ability to toolbox in your graveyard. So we're gonna do another test hand. I'm not gonna go probably as in depth, but if I can showcase to you guys another play string combo I can do in this deck, like um, I think it'd be really important. And granted, I may be you know a good deck builder at times, but I might not be specifically the best pilot of my particular deck. So. This combo here, we already have a ton of different options, and Coatl actually opens it up quite a way. So, either on your first turn or on your second turn, you can do a variety of different plays. Um, most importantly, I want to mention is like you've got access to your Snake Rain, you got access to a Revival Trap, uh, you have access to Lamia, and this is kind of where the Coatl play lives. So. Whether you're going first or second, and we can see what we have if we're going second. See, it doesn't really matter, but uh, Lamia plus Coatl <coughs> equals your level six Reptilian Hydra from your extra deck. Very good card, uh, but only good if a bunch of your opponent's monsters are zero, which they will be, uh, thanks to using your Reptilian Lamia's effect, who you can chain when she's synchro summoned uh, to do that effect. And then Coatl, if your opponent controls zero attack monsters, you can special summon any other reptilian monsters that you have in your hand. But the real play that I'd like to do here, uh, rather than using our Lamia at this current point in time, is to utilize your uh, Octoatic Boundless, who can be normal summoned, and then Coatl can be special summoned. And we're now going to Synchro. We're going to Synchro into a really, really awesome monster, Melusine, who is, uh, when used using reptiles, is indestructible by uh, battle and card effects. So you guys can already see uh, we have a lot of uh, really great plays here. And then you can activate this effect here. Uh, this is the effect of Zoha, which basically allows you to add, um, uh, basically like you send a card from your hand to your graveyard after you add an Ogdoidic monster from your deck to your hand. And of course your opponent's going to get to draw and send as well, but uh, the most important thing that you can do is you can send a key Ogduatic piece straight to your graveyard. The one I like to grab is a Leer, send him to the graveyard, and uh, then pretty much what we have here is we have a great setup play. Of course, you guys can still special summon. Uh, you guys can still special summon your Lamia to the field, who can then tribute himself for a Leer to bring himself back to the board, which is actually honestly awesome because. Uh, <clears throat> if you run any level eight uh, XYZ monsters, like that's, you know, a another play play string that you could go on here. You also have the Reptilian Lamia play as well. Uh, if you wanted to do your, uh, you know, a Baron de Fleur for a nice first turn kind of play here. Or most importantly, guys, we have the Snake Rain. So you can ditch this off like this, send it to the graveyard, and send any four reptiles there. So that helps to uh, kind of expand the types of plays that we have. And did you guys notice we're sending more reptiles than ever to our graveyard? Uh, we have a whole bunch of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so you guys can see eight times five is 4,000. So any phenomenon or phenomenaga is automatically going to be coming to the field at around 35 to 4,000 attack power. So I'm gonna move on and maybe do one more test hand here. And of course, if you guys have any questions on any of the combo plays, feel free to let me know in the comment section below.
so here we go our last test hand and this one is actually really great because uh, these guys together actually make up a big part of a Venominaga combo so how do we do it well we're gonna first start decide whether or not you want to discard the Niami or the Lamia I usually like to discard the Niami because she's also able to generate advantage for you in graveyard and uh you know, when you control a monster that's got zero attack, you can special summon Lamy, uh, Niami to the field, provided you haven't activated her effect. So guess what? As you guys can see here, uh, basically, the um, you can only use uh, one effect of her this turn. So by discarding Niami, we're going to send four reptiles from our deck to our graveyard. We're going to send those guys. We're going to send an Alert. We're going to send one of our uh, Boundlesses. And we're going to send a um, we're going to send a remnant. So that's five reptiles in graveyard. Shuffle that up, but we now have an Ogduatic Water Lily play here. Um, this should be off the field, by the way, guys. But one of the key first things that we can do um, is if you target an opponent's monster, for instance, special summon this card. And then, uh, because you control a zero attack monster, you can then special summon your Niami right away. Uh, so that also gets you some serious benefits uh, advantage-wise on the board. The other key play that we have here is even before you do that, you can special summon this back and then do the same exact play. So you have three bodies on board uh, at this point in time. Um, you know, and you still haven't normal summoned this turn yet as well. So, uh, depending on the kind of play structure that you wanted to set up, you have a lot of different options because when Water Lily goes to the graveyard, uh, you know, if you've got five reptiles, it sends one to the grave. If you've got five reptiles in grave, you can revive something from your uh, graveyard. So that ends up being really, really nice uh, for extra added benefits. <coughs> draw. Uh, more reptile combos. As you guys can see from this hand, uh, this guy is first turn play starter, play extender, whatever you want to call him. Uh, helps get a lot of your other plays off and uh, really just provides this deck with a ton of versatility and consistency. So that's going to do it. Catch you guys in the next video.